Hello one and all, this is Luckless Lovelocks and Orwell has summoned us back. Quite literally actually, I did get an email from the, the Orwell service telling me that they need me to come back because of the uh, the second assault at uh, Stelligan University. And uh, because it's been about a week since I played this, I'm actually looking at the summary of the last episode just so that I can get reacquainted with what happened. We were investigating Cassandra Watergate because there was an assault on Freedom Plaza and she was seen there. Um, she was part of uh, an activist group called Thought, or believed to be a part of it. She wrote something, but she didn't seem like, from what we saw, she didn't seem like very intimately involved with the group, but I guess we'll find out this time around. Um, and right at the end, there was a second assault at Stelligan University, which seems to be connected to the first, but Cassandra Watergate was arrested at the time. So she's, it's possible she could have been involved, but she definitely isn't the one that did it. Um, so what ended up happening at the end of the last episode is uh, Cassandra Watergate was charged with the interview of a police officer at a protest at Freedom Plaza. Uh, we found out that she's an artist. Uh, she was previously um, investigated for the attack on the officer during the uh, protest, but she was let go due to a lack of evidence. But we heard her talking to her friend, uh, admitting that she did it. Um, she's in a relationship with her lawyer, Joseph Langley. And uh, we collected some data saying that she could have a dangerous personality. Um, and what else happened? Yeah, she seemed to have undergone a radical change after she joined the activist group Thought. So that's I think that's going to be the, um, the target of our investigation this time around, that group Thought and who leads it and what's going on with them. Um, so let's get into it, guys. I'm super excited to see where this story is going to go, and I hope you are too. Lead profile, no. Ah, here's the summary. I wasn't sure what was going to happen when I started up, so um, you guys can read through this if you want to. That's uh, basically what I was reading from. So let's move on to the next day, guys. Here we go. A place where there is no darkness. Welcome back. I hope you don't mind if we get started right away. We have tons of work ahead of us. So we got Symes back. I met with my superiors and they wish to continue with the test case. They believe in the capability of Orwell to handle this. Oh, and you of course. My superiors agree with me based on the information you have already extracted. The activist group known as Thought is worth investigating. Well, no kidding. It seems that the Goldfells is an important member of Thought. So we now have clearance to consider them as a target person. All right. Now that the Goldfells is a target person, there may be new data chunks available in documents you have already accessed. Don't forget to go back and recheck your sources. Goldfells. So that was the, um, that seemed to be the leader of thought, I believe. What do we know about a member of a group of, a group called Thought? Okay, let's go back through some of the information that we've read already. This was written by Goldfells, right? Liberty means anything at all. It means the right to tell people uh, what they do not want to hear. Okay, so we've got an image. That's a good start. Thoughts still free. I think we read this last time. German folk song called The Thoughts Are Free. Can we follow? What does this say? Edge's folk song, Thoughts Are Free, Thought Blog. Could be important. The letter. We are right, it seems. Of course it's important. That's um, the, the letter that was uh, left at each assault had to do with this poem, right? So we've got a connection there. When I was still young, long before I immigrated to the nation in 1993. That's good to know. An immigrant. Hmm. Think of the increasingly aggressive operations of the surveillance machinery in the nation. I truly fear the answer to this question. That is why I created this blog. Okay, yeah. 
he was the creator. The thought. An activist group with the same name is this blog? If Goldfels is the one who created the blog, perhaps he founded or even was the leader of the activist group. Okay. Right, and it, he was surprised to actually find out that uh, someone was already reading the blog. Headlines. We already read. Okay, these are all, I think these are all new stories. Let's start with uh, the rainstorm. Heavy rainstorm expected for the weekend. I don't, I don't know if this applies to our case at all. Moncton and, Far and Farview, as well as large parts of the Western nation will be covered in heavy rain clouds, culminating on Sunday. Uh, how many plants this weekend involving the outdoors in Bonton or Farview? Best forget about them. There's a massive low pressure system incoming, bring with it storm clouds and rain to the nation's west. Sunday morning will be hit the hardest until the late afternoon. Okay. Coming weekend, the cloud will move in. The temperatures will stabilize at comfy levels. This doesn't seem important. What about this? Timelines and Rosen announce cooperation. The Davenport siblings, owner of the biggest social network, Timelines, announced major cooperation with software giant Rosen Technologies. Okay, this is important because we were using Timelines to get info about Cassandra. Timeline founders Ada and Alan Davenport met Victor Rosen on Nation Today last year. It's a big deal. The internet billionaire siblings, Ada and Alan Davenport, creators and owners of the most important online social network, Timelines, located in Hillbury are starting a major cooperation with the Benton software giant Rosen Technologies. This has been announced in a uh, press statement given out on Friday by the PR departments of both companies simultaneously. By utilizing the existing infrastructure and software development cap capacities of Rosen Tech, Timelines will be able to respond to the needs and requirements of the quickly changing digital world in real time. Timelines executive Ada Davenport is quoted, our growing user base will profit from this significantly reduce downtimes, tighten security, and sped up integration of new features, she continued. Probably, I don't know, this doesn't seem too relevant right now, but maybe it will it'll get there later. Wait, is there, oh, there's a conversation going on here. It's Yosef. Hey, you. Who's he talking to? Sorry about last night, I really should have come over. Must be Cassandra? It's just that this client is massively influential and could bring a whole lot of exposure to the office. I've been trying to get a meeting for months and it went rather well, so here's hoping. I guess he has no idea that she's been arrested. God, I'm such a stupid old man. Just talks about his job too much. I'm sorry, it's just <sighs> such a big part of my life. Hello? Are you still upset? He thinks that she's just upset, okay. Cassie? Can you, can you at least answer me? If you don't, I'll start to worry. You know what I'm like. You'd think they'd inform the lawyer, uh, her lawyer right away. I guess not. Okay, so what's the connection between Bonton bombings? I guess it's the, uh, the letter, right? Tax against Stelligan University and Bonton and Freedom Plaza are connected, experts conclude. Got a Stelligan students and teachers alike are in shock and deep mourning. No kidding. The bombing that occurred yesterday at Stelligan University seems to be connected to the attack against the Freedom Plaza earlier this week. This is the conclusion of the police division who is investigating the cases. In both assaults, a similar explosive device created with pure malevolence appeared to have been used, police spokesman Steele said. Okay, similar explosive device. Letters uh, received prior to the assaults seem to support this suspicion. Although, someone could have read about the letter of the first bombing and used that to uh, kind of throw off the police for the second bombing. While their meaning is still puzzling investigators, according to rumors, people have been theorizing the numbers of stanzas might represent the number of bombings. Okay. Which in turn raises the question whether there might be another bombing yet to occur. We understand that some people jump to this conclusion. Yeah, there's no real, there's no good reason to believe this. That's not really evidence, it's just conjecture. Steele answered when confronted with this theory during a press conference. 
Meanwhile, Seligan University has declared that normal operation cannot continue under, under the circumstances, so they will be closing their doors for the time being. The university has also put up a special front page to pay their respect to the assault's victims. The above image. Okay. So there's a new entry for Cassandra. Rest records. Assault on police officer. Arresting officer redacted. Holding facility redacted. The suspect was arrested in her flat. She willingly opened the door and cooperated with the arresting officer after having the warrant announced and her rights read to her. Okay, well, that's, that's good. Goldfells. Oh, right. So we did look at the user. Administrator. Five articles. Can I see all these articles? Shoot, I can't. That's right, I can only access them. Um, at, with a direct link. Anything else I can get from the profile? No. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know if we read this article before. I thoroughly believe we were able to capture minds. If only we could garner attention on thoughts as a group and what we stand for. It seems my ambition was once again too much. Thoughts, thought must change direction. Okay, this is July, 2016. After one and a half years, recruiting two of my students and arranging three demonstrations like the one held at Freedom Plaza, I feel obligated to ask myself where we stand. So he is a, um, a teacher or a professor or something. I feel obliged to ask myself where we stand. We have, have we reached our goal? What has been sacrificed along the way? In short, are we true to the initial goal that formed the group? Frankly and sadly, the answer to the latter is a resounding no. We let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred toward those we thought to do us wrong. Thoughts are free, but that does in no way mean that they can attack and do whatever they wish. Instead of blaming others, I now see my high aims might well be the cause for all the events of the past months. More than anyone else of thought, I feel responsible. As a consequence, I will halt my active engagement in this group. I firmly believe it shall be for the better of everyone involved, especially my students from Stelligan. Ah, he was a professor at Stelligan. What does it say here? Concerned one. July 12th. In July, okay. Please reconsider. Guy hurt, uh, there was only a goddamn cop. Guy hurt there was only a goddamn cop. They had it coming for long. It was messy, I know. All the way back to the thing I messed up organizing. But hell, look at the bright side. We made the news. This is what we wanted, what you wanted. Huh. This guy organized something else. So maybe some other demonstration. Okay. Uh, so this is important. Hmm. Three demonstrations. More interesting uh, might be that two students seem to be involved. Okay, and we've got a choice here. Reacts with hatred and anger about troubled past of thought. Hinted at a troubled past of thought. Conflict here. Okay, so which which do we want to pick? Let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred toward those. See, it's like now this is a choice. Can we? Do we want to give the impression to Sims or Sims that this is like that they're that they're driven by hatred and anger, or do we want to sh demonstrate that thought was designed to be? Just a place where people could share their thoughts, even if they were negative. Feel responsible. Um, or do we want to also show that he thinks that he is responsible? I feel like this is more true. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this one. 
And now see my high aims might well be the cause for all the events of the past months. Trouble pass. We'll have to get to the bottom of this. Okay. So resigning is important. Whatever active engagement means, still an interesting fact. And then the students, I'm assuming Cassandra was one of them. Related document. What now, Stelligan? The same Stelligan where a bomb just exploded? You know what I think about coincidences? I won't repeat it. So far, the evidence suggests that Goldfels is a prominent lecturer at Stelligan. Some of his students became involved in thought. Did he, like, recruit them for his cause? We need to identify those students. See who else is involved with the group. Let me just see. Is there anything new? Yeah, okay. There's nothing with this um, story of the second explosion. To grab. I think we read this. Um, Memorial Stelligan. So we know a bit. I'm surprised. We, I guess we don't know his current occupation. Oh, suspect uh, Bonten bombings arrested. That's pretty big. Let's go. Let's go take a look at that. First suspect in connection with assault arrested. Woman arrested in connection with recent attacks in Bonten. It looks. <laughs> pretty surprised. Um, interesting. Police spokesman Jim Kaufman informed the press about the progress of the investigation. A couple of minutes ago, the Bonten Police Department reported that an arrest in connection with the recent bombings in the capital has been made. A young woman has been brought into custody thanks to investigation uh, efforts of a special task force. Police spokesman Kaufman said, How the woman is related to the bomb attacks Kaufman did not cover. However, it is rumored that the suspect is well known to authorities by other incidents. We need to find out who this is. Let's go back to the uh, university website. Yesterday evening, an explosive device went off on Stelligan campus, killing a Stelligan student as well as a lecturer. Several other individuals have been severely injured. Be kind of good to know who those are. The authorities are investigating. This is an unspeakable tragedy, Stelligan President Hopkins said during the press conference that took place this morning. In the light of recent events, it is impossible to maintain daily routine. This is why I've decided to suspend all educational services at Stelligan University until further notice. Okay, we already knew that. Therefore, Stelligan campus will remain closed at least for the rest of the week, with no educational courses or events taking place. Elected best public dining hall, nation's best competition. I don't know if that's relevant, but let's read it anyways. Jury of the nation's best uh, contest, contest, annually awarded to the most excellent public services, has declared Stelligan's Canteen the winner in its best public dining hall category. In the recent time, we have tried to be fearless about our services and trying something new, something that just may not have worked. Okay. We're very happy to receive this honor as a direct consequence of those efforts. Fearless about dining halls, okay. Uh, the student services manager, Gusto, declared consecutively in a press statement. I don't see how that's relevant. Uh, courses. Silicon University offers prospective student courses from a broad variety of fields in which bachelor or master's degrees may be obtained. Please refer to the faculty pages for a more detailed description of each course. Biotechnology, medicine, environmental technology, media uh, techniques, media ethics. Goldfels. Representative Professor Goldfels having retired. Okay, let's uh, obviously take a look at that. There he is there. Being a luminary in his profession, Abraham Goldfels gladly accepted the offer, the offer uh, professorship in the field of media ethics at Seligan, from which he sadly retired in fall 2016. So we're going to upload this. Abraham it is. Well done. 
So we know his first name. And we know his previous profession. Did you notice the bombing locations seem to be closely connected to Thought members? There could be a pattern emerging. Thought has held three demonstrations, yet there have only been two bombings, which might imply. So this is kind of going with the theory that there's three stanzas, therefore three bombings. It seems to be connecting. Coincidences, right? Well, it's definitely a shot in the dark, but we absolutely need to do everything we can to prevent another attack. He said that he recruited two students. I'm assuming one of them is Cassandra. We need to find out who the other student is. Take a close look at the past of each member with thought. Find out the locations of all demos they have held. That might yield a hint. And uh, so there was an anonymous person that posted on the blog saying that uh, they screwed up the, the first, I, guess, I assume they're talking about the demonstration. Okay, previously, Professor Goldfels has held a position as a journalist at Der Reporter, one of the most renowned German daily newspapers. Okay. We look at his stories, maybe. And was also a chairman of the Global Media Ethics Congress. Pretty influential people, person, sorry. Member of an ethical Congress. Just the average run-of-the-mill terrorist trait. Uh, really? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Uh, I assume he's being sarcastic. In his works, Professor Goldfels never relents to emphasize the importance of privacy over public interest. Importance of privacy over public interest. Okay. So he, he believes that we should have private lives and that's more important than, say, our safety. So publica publications of significance, privacy versus public interest, where the rights to know ends. An analysis of dangers and overexpressive self-representation in social media. Uh, the thoughts are free, a modern time declaration of independence towards mass surveillance. That was in 2014. Well, what do you say to that? He literally wrote the book. Wow, that's a whole lot of information about this uh, Goldfells. Yet only one other page could be indexed. Very strange indeed. I think the next course of action should be to look for other people of this thought group. Like the students he mentioned. Totally agree. Maybe I'm wrong about Cassandra. Let me... Can I go back and take a look at Cassandra? Did we find out... She was an artist. And if we go back, courses, is there some kind of art course? Apartment media, I don't see anything. And did we find out art career? So was she at all, at all a student of his? I guess not. Music and activism. Yeah, I don't think I don't think she um she was she was a student of his, so we've gotta find two other students. Um Isukal attendee list. Uh, is there another notable alumnus here? Legacy of University is carried on by its most remarkable alumni, Orlando Buford. A Stelligan alumnus of the biotechnology course is the founder and CEO of one of the highest grossing online grocery trading companies, Mkado. We've got Catherine Delacroix. Ever since her early study years as a student of criminal law, Catherine Delacroix has been a member of the party. 2009, when the party had been elected as government, Delacroix was named head of the newly created Ministry of Security. Okay, we've totally heard of her before. Um, if we go back to... Where's our stories? Oh, that's interesting. We've got objectives here. Go back to the headlines. Um... Go 
negotiations. Is it here? No. The party. There she is there, Catherine Delacroix, Secretary of Security. So she went to the school. Isn't that interesting? I'm surprised um, that's not an important piece of information. Because didn't she basically, like, found Orwell? Exception of the safety bill elevating security standards in the country to a new level. Hmm, something to consider. Who else is there? Joseph Langley. Opened his own law office in the city of Bonton some years after his graduation at Stelligan. His law office is probably best known for having defended construction entrepreneur Elwood Hendricks, in what gained public attention as the lion share scandal. Joanna McElroy, haven't heard of her yet. Having studied medical technology at Stelligan, Joanna McElroy now is the host of the eponymous daily TV show Four and McElroy's, which she covers psychological family issues. Okay. Let's take a look at this handy list. ISU Cal. Internal Stelligan University class attendee system. Pick a class by completing the three-step wizard below. Uh, I guess I'll start from the top. Holy crap. Okay, let's try to find... Let's try to find him. Would have been in... Uh, media, right? But that would have been, this would have been after he retired. Left in fall of 2016. Maybe summer. Looking for Goldfells. Here we go. Professor Goldfells and Abraham. 27, 27 attendees of class number 58332 during summer semester. Juliet Carrington. Master's thesis registered at this course. Why are we interested? Why is this person like popping out at us over anyone else? Got an A. Are we. Oh, she was a person of interest. Oh! Is that her friend? It is! Oh, okay, okay, okay. That was the friend that she was talking to. Okay, it's all kind of coming together, guys. And she was... Was she the alumnus? No, that was Joanna. Okay, okay. Get back to that. That that name didn't pop out to me. Can we click on her? No. That's interesting. Okay. And then there's another one. Harrison O'Donnell. Student number not applicable. Do we have Harrison here? We do, just don't. Another friend of Cassandra. Go back another semester. Old fells. Nine attendees. Cassandra White. No one else of interest. Let's 
Go back one more. Not here. Interesting. I just want to see law. Probably not involved in any of the law courses. Okay. So we have pictures for some of these people. Oh no, we, yeah, we have for Yosef. Definitely, uh, it's getting more and more interesting. I guess we must have missed some other uh, attendees. interested in uh, his classes. Go back here. And I'll like look up the student number. Am I missing? Learn this info is important, I guess. Goldfells and Abraham. Let me just check some of the other um, courses that were offered, see if he appears anywhere else. missing now. Why don't where the three protests of thought took place? Didn't contact Avery and Goldfell, so I thought I've done that. Must have missed like some courses. Media ethics, yeah. in some of the other classes. Doesn't look like it. What is it? We haven't unlocked insight or whatever that is.
Here's an O'Donnell. Hmm. Nothing here again. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode here, and we're going to continue investigating uh, these people later. I'm not quite sure what I'm missing. I thought uh, I found uh, two students that could possibly be connected, but not finding out any more information about them right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and uh, I'll try to figure out what to do for the next one. Uh, this is Luckless Lovelock signing out for now, and I love you all.